what happens when a conflict ends and you have surplus ships laying around? This is an interesting question, and it's one that the United States Navy had to answer at the end of the Second World War. The absolutely gargantuan buildup of naval forces was still ongoing, even as Japan surrendered. It had slowed down, yes, but it had not stopped. And that left a bit of a problem. What to do with all of those ships? The complete ones were kept around for the most part, even if a lot of them entered into reserve. Some would come out during the Cold War. Others would be loaned or sold off to friendly Allied powers. And still others would remain in reserve for a decade or two before quietly being scrapped. This still left a few incomplete ships to sort out. Notably, the final Alaska-class cruiser and the last two Iowa-class battleships, Hawaii, Illinois, and Kentucky, respectively. Now, I've covered Hawaii before in a dedicated video. For today, we'll return to her, but also to Illinois and Kentucky, to look at the ultimate fate of those three ships, from why their construction was halted to the various plans to complete them, and of course, when and why they would be scrapped instead of being completed. I suppose it's only fair to start with Hawaii as the one I covered before. This ship, the third and final of the Alaska class, was laid down on December 20th, 1943. During her construction, the ship would face numerous delays from steel shortages and shifting priorities. Even after laying the ship down, the Navy continued to want to build just about anything else. Because of this, Hawaii was launched on November 3rd of 1945. After the war she was built for, and the Navy she was intended to fight, came to an end. Unfortunate, really. Her already slow construction largely ground to a halt, with work canceled outright in 1947. By this point, the cruiser was about 82% complete. Even her main battery turrets had been fitted. You can make a compelling argument towards... Why not finish the ship at that point? Most of the work was done, and leaving her there was a waste of money, and the effort spent getting her that far. Despite that argument, however, Hawaii was left in place, with only one reason why she wasn't just scrapped outright. Along with USS Kentucky, she was the largest surface warship available for potential conversion without taking an already complete ship and tearing her apart, which would have been a fair bit more expensive. In light of this, several potential conversion plans were put forward, the most common being a missile cruiser of some form. Even here, though, the Navy couldn't make up its mind. The various options range from an oversized version of USS Albany to a bizarre aircraft carrier hybrid. These various plans were taken seriously enough that Hawaii's 12-inch guns were removed. Before the ship was sent to reserve, pending some sort of conversion going through. With this in mind, let's look at those plans. We'll start with the first, and definitely the weirdest, that aforementioned hybrid design. This was SCB-26A. As the plan went, Hawaii would become an experimental test ship, a missile cruiser with a short flight deck forward. Hawaii would have experimental missiles fitted alongside her superstructure. This is clear enough. It's less apparent what the flight deck would be used for. This was only 256 feet long, which makes an escort carrier look large. It had a catapult and equipment to launch the Loon missile, the American copy of the V-1. However, operating actual aircraft 
was another story entirely. It certainly wasn't long enough for landing. Then again, the stern was probably even stranger. Hawaii had launch tubes for V-2 missiles. With those tubes in turn, large enough for missiles even bigger than those. Hawaii would be a test ship for missile development, with up to 50 of the V-2s. As you could guess, this was a tad bit optimistic. Fueling those early missiles was a pain with incredibly volatile liquid fuels. Not exactly a great thing on a warship, which has enough fire and explosion hazards as it is. Especially with an aircraft catapult fitted to the stern near to the missile tubes. In the end, the Navy would take the sensible option of converting USS Mississippi as a cheaper missile test ship. So, with the only result of this plan being the removal of her 12-inch guns, Hawaii was sent to reserve. She would languish there while various other missile plans came and went. An early attempt at the start of the 1950s was designed around the Terrier missile. This conversion was projected to cost something like $62 million, which is not exactly cheap, being something like $825 million in today's money. However, this plan was pushed aside in favor of a command ship conversion. Details on this are somewhat sparse, though the plan was evidently for something similar to USS Northampton. Just on a larger and grander scale, considering the larger size of Hawaii. This plan didn't last very long because the Navy wanted to see what experience operating Northampton actually gave them. In any event, while Hawaii would be redesignated to CBC-1 on February 26th of 1952 in preparation for the conversion, it was ultimately pushed aside. The carrier USS Wright would, instead, take a position alongside Northampton as a far cheaper conversion. Hawaii reverted to CB-3 in September 1954. For three more years, she would remain in mothballs waiting for any further conversion plans. Hawaii certainly wasn't getting her old guns back by that point. In early 1957, however, the final potential conversion came up. This one took the old V-2 idea and expanded on it. By replacing Hawaii's stern turret with 20 Polaris missiles. These were safer missiles, more advanced, and far more deadly. Polaris was an ICBM equipped with a nuclear warhead. There were various sketches made for this conversion, but none of them went anywhere. Frankly put, it was simply too expensive. Hawaii didn't carry a notably heavier loadout than existing cruiser conversions. She would have been too expensive for too little payoff. Even the Polaris would be a bust because the Navy chose to keep those limited to submarines. Because of this, Hawaii was ultimately scrapped in early 1960. She would never see completion, which is actually a bit of a shame because she would probably have been better for the role the Iowas took up in the 1980s. Certainly cheaper to operate while still providing plenty of gunfire support. And on the topic of the Iowas, Let's move to Kentucky and Illinois. Here we'll start with the second of the two, because Illinois had less in the way of concrete plans. For Illinois, this story began on December 6, 1942, with this going, if anything, even slower than Hawaii. Illinois was initially projected to complete in May of 1945. But between the aforementioned steel shortage and a focus on aircraft carriers, Illinois was only 22% complete 
when the ship was outright canceled on August 11th, 1945. Incidentally, Friedman cites the ship as laid down in January of 1945. From what I can tell, this might be a case of the ship being laid down in 1942, but only really begun in 1945, which would match up with the 22% completion rate, admittedly. In any event, Illinois was never given much consideration towards being completed. The Hulk was only kept around at first for potential use in nuclear weapon testing. Even this went nowhere because the ship would need around $30 million to complete to the point of launching, or about $533 million in today's money. Unsurprisingly, Illinois was scrapped on the slipway. Surprisingly, this work took until September 1958. While details aren't clear, it is apparent the Navy was at least considering something with the ship for over a decade. So, why do I bring her up at all? Because, as I recently covered, Illinois was considered for an aircraft carrier conversion, although this was back in 1942, with the spring style drawn up in June of that year. Exactly when the plan started isn't clear on available information. It might have started in June. It could have started in January 1942, when a similar plan for Alaska was dropped. Regardless, the plan was for an aircraft carrier roughly equivalent to an Essex. The conversion even looked like an Essex, aside from the Iowa hull form. A hull that would have caused issues with hangar space, even if the flight deck was long. Specifically, a flight deck of 864 feet or 263 meters in length. Illinois could probably have supported an air wing of around 80 aircraft, maybe 90 at the higher end. That sounds impressive, and in fairness it is. But at the same time, it's not better than an Essex, for a longer build time and a more expensive result not to mention resulting in a non-standard ship. It's for this reason that the conversion never went forward, and Illinois was never completed. A sad, but not surprising fate. However, that rounds off Illinois, with this video rounded off by her sister ship, USS Kentucky, a battleship that was laid down on March 7th of 1942. Although, much like her sister, this went nowhere fast. Kentucky was suspended in June, with the little work done launched to make room for building LSTs. For two years, nothing major was done on the ship. Construction only resumed on December 6, 1944, which lines up with Friedman here as he cites her laid down on that day. That's why I consider both 1942 and 1945 as accurate with Illinois. In any event, work on Kentucky went far faster than her sister ship. Still slow, but Kentucky was further along by the end of 1945. The ship was still suspended in 1946, but that was less to do with her completion rate. And more to do with a plan to convert her to an anti-aircraft battleship. Details on the plan aren't exactly apparent. Friedman notes a reference claiming new dual-purpose 8-inch guns in either triple or quadruple turrets. This didn't, however, go anywhere. Instead, Kentucky was launched on January 20th, 1950, only to clear space for Missouri having run aground to go in for repair. At this point, a good portion of the whole work was complete. The overall progress had reached 73%. Not quite as far as Hawaii, but still pretty far along. 
However, the ship wasn't really worked on past this point. The anti-aircraft battleship concept seems to have been dropped. Instead, Kentucky would languish as various proposals were put forward. The most famous, of course, being various flavors of missile battleship. The first of these to go anywhere came in March 1955. Kentucky would retain two of her 16-inch turrets with six single 5-inch 54 caliber guns backing them up, while also gaining two twin launchers for either Talos or Tartar missiles, along with a launcher for Regulus cruise missiles. A different design called for two Polaris missile launchers, for 16 missiles in all, supported in turn by four Talos launchers and 12 Tartar launchers, which altogether would have had 824 missiles between them. Freeman also notes a similar radar array as Enterprise and Long Beach, probably what resulted in this cursed abomination on screen now. In the end, however, nothing would come of those plans. A more reasonable layout of two Talos and four Tartar launchers was, like Hawaii, not any better than Albany, and far more expensive. Ultimately, Kentucky would have her bow lopped off in 1956 to replace Wisconsin's damaged bow, with the rest of the ship scrapped in early 1959, bringing an end to the last incomplete big gun warship in the United States Navy. These ships had interesting potential, but in the end, they were simply too expensive for too little gain. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.